All right, in this video, uh, we will study that total differentiability implies continuity, but not vice versa. And also, we study the conditions for uh, a function to be totally differentiable. So let's start. First of all, let's review the definition of total differentiability. So we have a function. Let's consider only bivariate functions. Uh, let's say we have f of x, and if we have this asymptotic expansion. So a, b is some uh, fixed point, and x and y are variables. And if we can expand this function f of x, y as this constant, plus some constant m times x minus a, plus n, n is an, another constant, y minus b, plus little o of distance between x and p as uh, x move x is uh, this point moves to this point p a b so as we get uh, move x closer to p uh, if the function is expressed in this way for some m and n uh, so these are con real constants then we say the function f of x y is totally totally differentiable Ball. okay now we show that if a function is totally differentiable at this point, p, then it is also continuous at this point. Uh, so let's formalize this in, in the form of a theorem. If f of xy is totally differentiable, at a, b, then uh, f of x, y is continuous at a, b. So let's prove this. But the proof is actually quite simple because if f of x, y is totally differentiable, we have this expression, right? And if you look at this, as we move x, x, y towards a, b, then this part will converge to 0. This part will converge to 0 because m and n are just constants. And little o uh, of the distance between x and p, this will converge to 0. So everything here, here, here will converge to 0 except for this one, which is a constant. Therefore, uh, we have this limit. So x, as x moves to p, then f of x, y is equal to f of a, b, right? This will disappear, this will disappear, this will disappear, and this remains. Therefore, this holds. Therefore, f of x, y is continuous. at a, b. And we are done. One thing you should be careful about this theorem is that the converse is not true. It's not always true. Okay. For example, uh, if you consider this function, f of x, y equal to the absolute value of x minus y. Okay. This function is continuous everywhere. But it's not totally differentiable. Is not totally differentiable. On the line. On the on y equal to x. Okay, so at, on this line, this function becomes zero. But uh, when y is greater than 
x, then f of x, y is equal to, uh, let's see, so x minus y becomes negative. That means we have y minus x. On the other hand, if y is less than x, then f of x, y is x minus y. So that means on this line, uh, the partial derivatives cannot be defined uniquely. So th that means we don't have such constants as m and n uh, for this function. Uh, as we have seen before, if a function is totally differentiable, these constants m and n are just partial derivatives. m uh, is the partial derivative with respect to x, and n should be the partial derivative uh, with respect to y. But those partial derivatives do not exist on this line. It cannot be uniquely determined. Therefore, uh, this function is not totally differentiable on this line. And therefore, it is, uh, uh, so it's, it's not totally differentiable. Uh, so even if it's continuous, it's not totally differentiable. So this is a case when uh, there are no partial uh, differential coefficients of derivatives. But there are more subtle cases, as we'll see next. Next, let's consider this function, uh, f of x, y equals to x, y over x squared plus y squared when x, y is not the origin. Otherwise, let's set to 0 when x, y is equal to 0, 0. Okay, so first let's see if this function is continuous at the origin. Okay, so let's take the limit along this line. Okay, so if we have x and y plane, let's consider a line through the origin, y equals to mx, so the slope is m, then f of x and mx becomes uh, x times mx and x squared plus m squared x squared. So x squared can be cancelled and we have m over 1 plus m squared, which depends on the value of m. Therefore, so that means uh, the value of this function as x goes to 0 depends on the direction uh, of approach to the origin. So if we change the value of m, uh, then the, the limit of this function will be different. That means, uh, therefore, f of x, y, as defined in this way, is not continuous. At 0, 0. However, uh, however, f of x0, so we fix the value of y to 0 in this, then we have f, x, f of x0 is equal to 0 uh, for all x. Okay. Um, uh, including when x is equal to 0, right? And also we have f of 0, y equal to 0 uh, for all value of y. Okay, therefore, uh, in either case, we have the partial derivatives. So partial derivative of this with respect to x is 0, 
So of course, uh, fx of 0, 0 is also 0. So this means partial differential coefficient at the origin is 0. And similarly, we have uh, this derivative. Therefore, the partial derivative at the origin uh, with respect to y is also 0. So we do have partial derivatives at the origin. Nevertheless, this function is not continuous. Therefore, by the contraposition of this theorem, this function f is not totally differentiable. Uh, let's summarize this situation. So the theorem says if a function is totally differentiable, then it is continuous. And for this function, uh, this function, we have seen that it is not continuous. So by the contraposition of this theorem, not continuous implies that not totally differentiable. Okay, so even if the partial derivatives do exist, this function is not totally differentiable. So this means simply the existence of uh, partial derivatives do not guarantee uh, total differentiability. So what other conditions are required for a function to be totally differentiable? That's the next question. Okay, here's the theorem about the criterion for total differentiability. Criterion of total differentiability. Okay, so let you be an open set. And which is a subset of two dimensions uh, plane. And let A, B be a point in this set. And let's say f of x, y is a function from u to real numbers. Then if f of x, if x of x, y and f, y, x, uh, exist. So these, if these partial derivatives exist, uh, on u, and and are con these are continuous at a b. Then f of x, y is totally differentiable. At uh, a, b. Okay, so in addition to the existence of the partial derivatives, uh, it is also required that those partial derivatives are continuous at the given point. So if these two conditions are satisfied, then the function is totally differentiable at that point. All right, let's prove this theorem. So first let uh, AB be a point in the open region U. 
and that's which is different from x y okay x y are uh, variables but uh, they should be different from a b okay and uh, so let's fix y for example uh, first uh, fix y and so by the mean value theorem for univariate functions okay we have the following f of x y minus f of a y so we consider y as fixed constant so f of x y is just a univariate function of x okay then there exists some h between uh, x and a such that this holds okay for some h between x and a okay and this is the deri derivative of f as a function of x right okay and similarly so we do the same thing for the y variable uh, we have a f of uh, a b uh, not a b a y minus f of a b so in this case we fix the value of x to a okay and uh, this time the partial derivative with res with respect to y and a k and y minus b uh, for some k between y and b okay and by assumption uh, these derivatives the partial derivatives are continuous okay uh, we are assuming they are continuous okay uh, f x and x y and f y are continuous by assumption okay so what this means is the following this limit x y go to a b f x of x y so this will converge to f x of a b and similarly f y of x y converges to f y of a b okay so this is just a just the fact we can sim uh, derive straightforwardly from the assumptions now our goal is to show that the function f of x y is totally differentiable okay so what this means is the following so we want to prove prove that f of x y can be expressed asymptotically expressed as f of a b plus and some constant x minus a and some constant of course this constant should be uh, partial differential coefficients and b and plus little o uh, between the, dist uh, the distance between uh, x and p 
okay, where x is xy and p is ab. Okay, so we want to show this equation holds. Okay, to show that this equation holds, we need to show that uh, the following. So this is little o. So what this means is that if we take this uh, function, f of x, y minus these things, f of a, b minus m, x, a, and minus n, y, b, and divide by the distance, okay? Uh, x minus p, this will converge to zero, okay, as x approaches p. Okay, this is what we need to show. And of course, uh, m and n are partial derivatives, differential coefficients, again. Okay, so let's consider this expression. Okay, uh, to make uh, some notation simpler, so let's take uh, s, uh, let s be x minus a and t be y minus b. Okay, and we consider the following uh, quantity f of x uh, y minus f of a b minus partial derivative or with respect to x at a v a b and uh, partial uh, times x minus a and minus partial uh, differential coefficients and y minus b and we divide everything here by uh, by this. Okay, so that is this x minus a squared plus y minus b squared. So that's the distance between x and p. Okay, so let's see. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so from here, we use, uh, we use, uh, where is it? Uh, this one. So we use this result from me the mean value theorem, uh, this one. Uh, wait a minute, not this one. Uh, this one and this one. Okay, so just consider this part first. Uh, let's see. f of x, y minus f of a, b is equal to f of uh, x, y minus f of uh, a, y plus f of a, y minus f of a, B. So we subtract this and add the same thing here. So it's just zero. But from the mean value theorem, we know that uh, this part can be written as uh, f the differential coefficient at uh, h y and x minus a, and and this part, wait a minute. This part can be written as f of y, f y of uh, x k, and y minus b. Okay, we used. Uh, this one and this one. Ah, oh, wait a minute. So this should be a. Okay. 
So substitute this uh, for this. We have so f x. Uh, just consider the the numerator of this one. So we have f h y x a plus f y a k y minus b and minus f x a b x minus a minus f y of uh, a b y minus b so we have x minus a here and y minus b here and here and so this is s this is t okay. so this is equal to f x h y minus f x a b and s plus uh, f y a k a k uh, minus f y uh, a b uh, times t. Okay, so so the numerator becomes this, and uh, let's take the the absolute value of everything. Okay, so we have so this original expression, uh, this everything here, becomes uh, the following. So let's take the absolute value. We want to show that this will converge to zero. Okay, so we have h y minus of a b s plus f y a k minus f y a b t divided by so here a minus a uh, x minus a is s and y minus b is t so we have uh, square root of s squared plus t squared okay so the absolute value of this by the triangle inequality, this is less than or, great, uh, or equal to, uh, let's see, uh, h y minus f x a b, and the absolute value of t, and this plus, so we separate uh, these two terms into uh, the sum of absolute values. Okay. Uh, a k minus f y a b. And the absolute value of t square root. Okay. Now, uh, each of these terms, so s, absolute value of s divided by the square root of s squared plus t squared, and similar for this one, the absolute value of t, t divided by square root of s squared plus t squared, so these are less than or equal to 1, right? Because the denominator is always greater than the numerator in 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 both cases. So we have the following inequality fxhy minus fxab and plus fyak minus fyab. Okay, so here we take the limit, okay, as x, y, uh, this point goes to a, b, then because 
these partial derivatives are continuous. Okay, and where is it? So, so we had this con these continuities. So if we move x y to a b, then this will converge to this value, and this will converge to this value, right? So this old thing converges to zero. So this shows f of x, y is totally differential. And we are done. Okay, so here is an example. Suppose, uh, let's say, uh, a g of x, y and h of x, y are polynomials. Okay, so that means g and h, they are uh, continuous and totally differentiable everywhere, right? So let us define uh, f of x, y as the ratio between these functions. So this is a continuous function as long as h of x, y is not equal to zero. Okay, it is continuous everywhere. Except, except when uh, h of x, y is equal to zero. Okay, and uh, and th this uh, the partial derivatives of this function are the following. So if we differentiate uh, this function with respect to this by, for example, uh, if you apply the quotient rule, you should have g uh, x and h x y minus g of x y h x of x y over uh, h x, x, y squared. And similarly for the partial derivative with respect to y, we have this and g, x, y, h, y of x, y over uh, h, uh, y squared. So these partial derivatives uh, uh, do exist and are continuous as long as h of x, y is not equal to zero. So that means uh, this rational function f of x, y is totally differentiable everywhere except when h of x, y is equal to zero. Finally, let us introduce a convenience term that is continuously differentiable. Differentiable or C1. Okay. So if, uh, so this means by definition, so this is a definition, f of x has uh, derivatives that are continuous. So f of, fx of x, y, and, and f, y, of x, y, 
and uh, these are continuous. Okay, so if these partial derivatives exist and and they are uh, continuous, then we say this function is continuously differentiable or of class C1, class C1, okay? So this is a natural extension of the term continuously differentiable or of class C1 uh, of the uh, univariate functions. In the case of univariate functions, we say it is continuously differentiable or of class C1 if it has a derivative that is continuous. Okay, so this is just a natural extension. But in the case of multivariate functions, it has to be uh, all the partial derivatives should exist and all of them are continuous. Okay? But I think that's simple enough. So if we use this term, uh, we have the following corollary. It's just a simple summary of the results we have uh, proved so far. So that is a continuously differentiable function or you can say a function of class C1 is totally differentiable. and continuous. Okay, so this is just a, just a different way of saying the same thing we have seen before. So continuously, dif continuously differentiable function means it, there exist uh, all the partial derivatives and those partial derivatives are continuous. Okay, if that's the case, then we have seen that the function is totally differentiable and also we have seen that a total dif totally differentiable functions are always continuous, right? So this corollary is very easy to prove. And that's all for this video. See you later.